Today's video is brought to you by Kingston's latest HyperX 3K SSD line. Perfect for your new Ivory Bridge build. Hello and glad to see you guys all back here once again on the motherboards.org YouTube channel. Today we're going to bring you guys something really neat from the people over at ASRock. Now, some of you guys may have heard of them, some of you guys may have not, but Fatality is, you know, kind of a big name in the gaming community. He's won a lot of tournaments and he's actually endorsed a lot of products. Today's video involves his latest endorsed product. This is the ASRock Z77 Professional Motherboard with the stamped Fatality logo right on the front of the box. Now, this video is an unboxing slash features video. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking in our forums, what's the difference between this motherboard and old school motherboards being Z68? The big difference is you can use all the latest Ivy Bridge processors that are gonna be soon released to the market. Yes, this motherboard does support Sandy Bridge CPUs, but all of the best technologies that are involved in this motherboard are going to go into effect with the new CPU. So that said, let's take a jump in and let's take a closer look at this new Z77 Professional Motherboard from the folks over at ASRock. All right, folks, like any good unboxing, we're obviously going to show you the box, starting off with the front of the box where we can see Fatality's little ugly mug off here to the left. In the front, we can also see his logo. We can see this is the ASRock Z77 Professional Motherboard. I'll spin the thing around the back. We're going to talk about some of the features that they show on the box. They call this the 555 XFast features, which features XFast RAM, so that it does Photoshop five times faster, XFast LAN, which is supposed to be five times faster LAN, and XFast USB, which is supposed to be five times faster USB. Moving down the box, we see Virtue Universal MVP. Now, a lot of people are taking advantage of this technology because it allows you to use any combination of video cards and the onboard video all together. So this means if you want to use an AMD card in conjunction with an NVIDIA card, you can do that. Or you can use an NVIDIA card or an AMD card in conjunction with the Intel onboard graphics. This gives you superior flexibility in your upgrade options and your performance. To the right of that, we see Intel Smart Connect technology. What this does is while your computer is actually sleeping, your computer can be out updating and getting all the latest stuff for your computer. To the right of that, we also see Intel Rapid Start technology. What this allows you to do is while your computer is in a sleep state, the waking process is now very fast, hence the Intel Rapid Start technology name. Last but not least, in the bottom of the box, we have a lot of different features. We're gonna show some of these in the board, but I'm just gonna name off. We have premium gold caps, DigiPower, 16 plus eight power phase design, four times DDR3, 2800 plus overclocking ability, the Vitality mouse port, which we'll show you more, and lastly, the UEFI system browser. Opening up the box, the first thing we can see is we have the quick installation guide. Then we have the support CD. There are six SATA cables, and these are pretty interesting. This motherboard comes with two Molex to SATA power connectors, the IO shield, one front panel USB 3.0 panel, four HDD screws, six chassis screws, one USB 3.0 bracket, and one ASRock SLI bridge. The first thing we're gonna notice as we take a look at this motherboard is it is a standard ATX form factor motherboard, which means it'll fit in most cases midsize or bigger. Don't try to stick it in anything smaller, it'll be too big for that. As we take a look around the ZIF socket, the first thing that we're going to notice is this is their 16 plus eight power phase design. You can see it encompasses everything around here and all the capacitors that are used in the board are Japanese gold cap capacitors, which means they're very high quality. Moving towards the top of the board, first we can see the eight pin power connector. And then right next to that, we can actually see the first two of five fan connectors. Moving along to the side of the board, you can see we have four memory slots here, two in black, two in red. This board supports up to 32 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. And like we said before, when we put it on the box, this motherboard supports up to 2800 megahertz overclocked memory. Right next to that, we see the 24 pin power connector. Now here's the board gets a little old school. And we kind of see things going backwards. Here is an old school IDE connector right there. So if you have some kind of old school IDE or CD device, if you're doing an upgrade path and you don't want to buy new parts, this may be a cheap way for you to do so. Right next to that, we see the USB 3.0 header. 
Moving along now to the left of the ZIF socket, we can see the additional two fan headers that are right here. Moving back to the area around the ZIF socket, now this board is LGA 1155. What does this mean? Well, this means that it'll support all the current generation Sandy Bridge processors and also the soon to be released Ivy Bridge processors, which makes it a good board for those wanting to upgrade and for those looking to jump into a whole new platform. And below that, we start to see our PCI expansion slots. This motherboard has two 1X PCIe slots. We also see the first two red slots. These are both times 16 if used in single mode or in dual mode, they're times eight. Down below that, we see an additional one. Now this is PCIe 2.0. It'll run in 16X mode by itself, but if you wanna use it in conjunction with the other cards, it actually runs times four. So that would be times eight, times eight, and times four in that configuration. We also have two standard PCI slots as well. Now, the audio on this motherboard, it's sufficient. I don't really consider the Realtek chipset anything to write home about, but this one does feature the new True Studio sound, so it should be pretty decent for anything that you're doing. Not the greatest thing, but not a terrible thing either. Moving along the bottom of the board, there are a few connections down here. Some of them you may not use. The first is a little SPDIF connector. The next is a COM port. You're probably not gonna use that. The next is, believe it or not, yes, it's still on here, a floppy port. Now, I haven't used a floppy port in a long time. Why it's on here, I don't know. Maybe Fatality just likes to have that kind of configuration in his system, not my cup of tea. Right next to that, in red, we have the IEEE header. And then moving down, we have the final fifth of the fan headers that we talked about in this motherboard, the final of five. Next to that, we have the two black USB 2.0 headers. To the right of that, we can also see that there is a total cooling solution that's located right there. It's a passive cooling solution, but it has the Fatality logo on it. And then below that, we have the Dr. Debug. Most of the motherboards have some type of solution on there. What it is, it gives you a debug code. You look it up in your manual. It tells you why your motherboard's having problems. So you can solve that solution. Moving along the final side of the motherboard, we see the start and reset button. These are very nice and easy to use, especially if you're gonna be using this motherboard on a test station. Now, as far as SATA connectivity goes, we get two types of controllers on here. There's actually a black label covering all of the Intel controllers. There's two different types though. The red is SATA 3, the black is SATA 2. The additional two red ports we see are controlled by the AS Media and are both SATA 3 connectivity. Lastly, let's take a look at through I.O. And I have to say, folks, that I do like the design in this quite a bit. Starting off on the left-hand side, we see legacy PS2 and keyboard port. This is good because some people really like and have those old school devices and prefer this. Down below that, we see the first of the USB 3.0 ports. To the right of that, we have the display port and the HDMI below that. Then to the right of that, we have four USB 2.0 connections. Then we have the clear CMOS button. Now, also one thing I wanna take note about is this thing features dual LAN or shotgun technology, which means you can use both these ports at the same time for increased speed or shotgun technology sending and receiving at the same time. Now, starting off again below the first LAN port, we see another two USB 3.0. Now, in between the other LAN port up here on top, this is something interesting. This is the Fatality mouse port. Now what this does, this allows you to hook a mouse directly into this and use Fatality's preferred polling rate of 500 hertz. You also have the ability to manually adjust from 125 to 1000 hertz. Pretty cool stuff there. The Fatality port also doubles as a standard USB 2.0 port and below that we have another one. Then we have the Firewire connection, the eSATA, then as we bounce over to the right we see the secondary LAN port, an additional two USB 3.0 ports, and to the right of that, we see the optical connection for audio and then all of your standard analog connections. Overall, you guys can see this motherboard does have quite a few good features on the motherboard. Its color scheme, very much akin to the Republic of Gamers motherboards. Some people might say that's AMD coloring. I don't know. So if I guess if you're using AMD video cards, that'd be cool. It all match in that color scheme. Um, some of the things I don't like about the motherboard, I'm just really not sure of why they're like all these old school things in there. I don't know why we have a floppy connector. I don't know why we have an ID connector. Like I personally never use any of that type of stuff. I'm always into building new technology. And I really don't feel that anybody out there at this moment, if you're out there at home and you have a Sandy Bridge processor and you have a Z68 motherboard, there is absolutely no reason for you to upgrade. The performance difference is going to be between zero and about 4%. That's it. 
so there's no reason to upgrade. All the latent and greatest features that we're going to see on the Z77 motherboards are coming with the new Ivy Bridge. If you guys are looking for a stamped Fatality board and you like his stuff, this board does have enough features on it though to make it a pretty nice motherboard. Thanks for watching this. We'll have all the performance in the next series of reviews after Ivy Bridge is released.